Amen. We thank God for being here today. We thank God for, amen, the word of God. Amen. The, everyone being here, the devotion service, amen. We thank God for, amen, just everyone being here in the household of prayer today. We thank God for Ella Butler in his absence. We thank God for Bishop Pye. Amen. We thank God for all the saints of God here. And made way, we thank God for blessing us through the cold. You, Amen. Allowing us to be here today. Amen. Thought it not equal, not <clears throat> not robbery to be in the house of God one more time. I thank God for all the saints that have traveled to South Carolina. We ask and pray that God um, bring them back, give them a safe trip there. Um, talk with some of them last night. So we just want to pray for them. We thank God for seeing our sisters back here today. In the name of Jesus, we thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for being here. We know that, <clears throat> amen, we serve a God, amen, that changes not. Amen. We, I thank God for, amen, what he's done for me. I thank God for being saved. I thank God for receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen, as a teenager. I thank God for, amen, the Lord uh, blessing me with a wife. I thank God for my two daughters that are here with me today. God has been good unto us. Amen. amen. I thank God for how... You know, when I look and I think about, amen, life in 2024, as we know it, what we see today, amen, we got to remember as saints of God, some of us been running a long time, some of us, we're trying to refocus, but we got to remember wherever we are in our journey, we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. The world that we live in now is full of distractions. The things that happen now with social media, uh, technology, the internet, things happen so fast. You can all the thing that I see right now is there's just distractions all across the land. Amen. But we as people of God, we gotta keep our eyes on Jesus. It's easy to look up what's going on in the world. It's easy to look at sometimes even what's going on in the church, but we gotta keep our eyes on Jesus. We gotta stay in our Bibles. We gotta remember what thus said the Lord and we gotta be looking for those things because truly it's easy to take our eyes. If we take our eyes off of Jesus, then we took our eyes off the prize. And that's what the enemy is trying to get everybody to do today is to take their eyes off of Jesus. Amen. Because see, he knows if, if our hope and our eyes and we look looking under Jesus, that's where our help come from. Amen. He know that and that's his job and he on his job is to try to distract us. To try to get us looking at something else. To try to Try to entice us with something out there in the world ain't no good, but we got to keep our eyes and our focus on Jesus. The biggest thing I see today, and I try not to focus so much on the world because they're going to do what they're going to do. Amen. But our focus, the Bible said the judgment must begin at the house of God. So I, my focus on what goes on in here. And the biggest thing that I see that goes on in here is that sometimes through circumstances and course of what's going on, we take our eyes off of Jesus. We stop watching, we stop looking, we start looking at what everybody else is doing. But I want to just try to <clears throat> encourage the saints today to keep our focus on Jesus. Psalms 121, we'll start at, and we'll begin at verse 1. <clears throat> Same thing with our, our young people, I thank God for them. Amen. We have. Uh, <clears throat> They get involved in the service. A lot of them are talented musicians in their own right and, and singers and things like that. But I want to encourage them, even as going to school, you're going to see a lot of things. And as parents and as in the community and the church body, we try to teach y'all what's right and what's wrong and what's pleasing unto the Lord. And you see everything when you walk out of the doors and y'all going to school. Amen. But I tell y'all, I tell, I tell my daughters the same thing. Regardless of who doing it, that don't make it right. Right is right. I don't care who doing it, and wrong is wrong. Who care who doing it? Amen. So I know I'm not naive because I've been a child. Everything that I teach my daughters when they walk out of there, somebody gonna tell oh, you ain't got to do that. Oh, they don't do that no more. Is that? But <clears throat> we got to keep our eyes and our focus on Jesus. I mean, this is Psalms 121, and we begin at verse one. And the scripture reads, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Now, I help come from the same Lord 
that made heaven and the earth. Amen. We know that we're living in a dark time now. <clears throat> we know that people are doing things now that we would have thought at one time you would have never seen, and people now are doing them out in the open. That's right. It's sad to say, but I'm not really shocked if I turn on my TV what I see now. That's right. There were things when I was growing up that people just wouldn't do. There were things when I was growing up that people just wouldn't say. All this out the window now. Anything and everything goes and that's the way of the world. And the sad part is they're trying to bring that in the church too. And remember, God has always had a standard and it's up to us, we gotta hold it high. He said, we, that's why I said we gotta keep our eyes on Jesus. I don't look at what's going on. <clears throat> a lot of times what bothers me, and I'm like everybody else, <clears throat> and at times I look at social media and there's preaching on social media and things like that. And I don't condemn it, but one thing that I see that bothers me, the Bible said that it was going to be a famine in the land. Not a bread of water, but a hen, in the words of the Lord. So you say, and the Lord has been dealing with me on this, but you say <clears throat> there's more people with social media outlets, there's more people preaching, there's more churches than we'd have never seen before. But it's still a famine in the land. I began to kind of wrestle with that. Lord, there's people preaching everywhere. But he said, I hear his word. Everybody not preaching the word of the Lord. It's 11, 12 o'clock, 12, 15 on a Sunday morning. There's people in church everywhere all across this country. But you can't hear the word of the Lord everywhere. You can't hear what thus said the Lord. She said, well, they got their Bibles open, but we got the Bible. Say, how can they believe when they have never heard? He said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except they be sick? But the thing is now that we got we to gotta be careful. We got to be watching because there's a lot of stuff that's being pushed out there. But a lot of it didn't come from God. We got to hold, amen, to what Atlanta said, the God that we serve. He made the heaven and the earth, and we looking to him. We in an evil time now. People, that's what I, but what I was, what I was saying, with, with uh, on YouTube, a lot of times there are people they preach the headlines. They're preaching politics. God didn't call us to do none of that. He called us to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, like I say, we, I, if I pay attention to what's going on in the world, if I pay attention to what's going on in the church world, then I take I have a tendency to take our focus off of Jesus, take our eyes off of him. And that's what we really see. The thing is, when all of this boils down, if we in here for the right reason, we in here because we want to be saved. Right. We in here because we believe that one day the Lord is going to crack the sky and he's going to call the church home. And whether we hear when that happened or when he called us before then, we want to be ready in the state that we can go back with it. Amen. If that's our focus, if that's our hope, if that's why we're here, then we got to keep our eyes on him. Because the thing is, there are distractions all over the place. And that's what's going on now. A lot of times people, they can't hear the word of the Lord because they hear political commentary. Or this what happened and this. It's sin everywhere. So the message is, Amen. Sin is a reproach unto God. He said, at the time of our ignorance, he winked at us, but he's commanded me everywhere to repent. I could beat the dead horse, but the, the saying is simple. They say, they got sin over there. They got sin. Everybody need to repent. Everybody need to examine themselves and see whether, because all of us, we got to stand before God and we got to stand before him. Right. So he commanded me in everywhere to repent. Amen. But I also, he wants us to keep a focus on him. Don't look to the left. Don't be looking at what people do. Because some people say, well, them people over there doing that, they say, I want to keep my eyes on the word. What did the Lord say that I need to do in order to be ready? Let's look at the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the sixth chapter and the 16th verse. And I just want to talk about... <clears throat> keeping our eyes on Jesus and, and, and being able to see where we're going. <clears throat> it's easy to get off track 
But the Bible says this, and this is why I try to stick with the word. The Bible says that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we stay with the word, we can see where we're going. The problem in the world today, and the problem a lot of times in a lot of churches, they're not staying with the word. When you get outside of the word, then you begin to stumble in darkness. You begin to trip. You begin to fall. That's why we got so many messages, messes in the church, because people have gotten away from the word. But as long as we stay in, our, in that word, we stay, we follow the scripture, and then we'll be able to see where we're going. Again, Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. Jeremiah, the 6th chapter, and the 16th verse. Jeremiah, the 6th chapter, and the 16th verse. Jeremiah the 6th chapter and the 16th verse. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where is the good way and walk therein. Now this is the Lord talking unto, <clears throat> this is Jeremiah declaring the word of the Lord. He said, stand ye in the ways and see, first of all, the way has already been made through Jesus Christ. The word has already been established. If we stand in that way, we can see where we're going. The problem now is in the church, in the same way as in the world, is the people want to do something different than already written, something that's already been established. They want to do something different, and that's where the trouble is. That's where they find darkness. That's why they find out they in all kind of things that's happening now that hadn't happened before because they're walking outside the path of the word of God. But this is what he's telling. This is the word of the Lord from the prophet Jeremiah. Stand in the ways and see and act for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your soul. And that sounds pretty good to me. Stand in the way and see. Ask for the old, ask for the old path. Where is the good way? <clears throat> walk in them. Word already been established and you'll find walk rest for your soul. But look at what the people said. But they said, we will not walk therein. Didn't want to follow the words of the prophet then, and people don't want to follow the words of the prophet now. Same thing, ain't nothing changed. Now, <clears throat> this word came from the Lord. Jeremiah let God's people know, this is what he wants from y'all. We don't want to do that. That ain't nothing new. All right, verse 17. I also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken ye to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. And Isaiah said it like this. He said, cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sin. So now he's telling them again, he said, watchmen over you. And hearken to the sound of the trumpet. In other words, hearken to the sound of the preacher that's preaching the word of God. These people said, we ain't going to hear. Again, it ain't nothing new. What happened is people get distracted and they take their eyes off of Jesus. And then they get to that point and they want to hear something else. I want to do something else. See, and if you go over to the New Testament, Paul was telling Timothy, he said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, <clears throat> rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but until they, they were with uh keeping themselves teachers, having itching ears. And we in that time. People don't want to hear they'll hear it for a little while, but they don't want to see the thing is the word of God causes us to examine ourselves. That true word of God, you can see yourself in it. Good or bad. Good, you can rejoice in it. If you see it, it ain't necessarily a bad thing. It just means you got to change. It just means God trying to save you. It just means God trying to draw you closer under him. But people don't want to do that. I got saved as a teenager, and I find myself now as a middle-aged man, and I come to this conclusion. 
Bible was right when it said all of the word of God is right, but especially when it said men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. See, neither they come to the light lest their deeds be reproved. When you come and you walking in the light, you walking on this path that these men talked about here, if it's something that's not right, the word of God is going to discover it. And a lot of times, we can have something in our heart, we can have something in our life, we can have something in our mind that we don't want the word of God to discover because we don't want to get rid of that. But what I learned, and I've been through trials and tribulations, but what I've learned, if I want to see Jesus, I want to see Jesus for myself. I love my wife, I love my daughter, I love everybody in here. But I know at the end of it, I got to see Jesus for myself. And if I want to see him for myself and see him in peace, I got to get rid of everything that's not like him. I got I to gotta search myself. I, gotta, I don't have time to look at you. I got to look at myself. See what's wrong with me. See what I'm not doing. <clears throat> see what I see. I say, you know what? The words say I got to do that. I'm not doing I got to do that. The words say we got to take this off. Then I got to take. That's what we got to be doing. That's when the word of God is effective. The problem we run into now is we looking at other stuff. We got our God, the devil has taken the church focus and shifted it somewhere else. Amen. But the thing is, trouble time is already here and it's about to get worse. And we got to know where our help come from. I have daughters now. Yes, I'm their dad. Yes, I, I work every day. Amen. Do, do my best to, to be a provider for them. Do my best spiritually. But I tell them all the time, you got to look unto the Lord. I mean, you got to pray, you got to hit because he is the source. If something happened to me and I ain't here no more, you still look up unto the Lord and he's able to sustain you. Amen. So we always, always, always got to remember where our help come from and our help come from the Lord. Amen. Let's look at this. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Chapter 20, and we'll start at verse 10. Second Chronicles chapter 20, and we'll start at verse 10. And we're not going to be too long. I'm thankful. Amen. But we want to keep our eyes on the Lord. It's all through the scripture, his people. Amen. His trouble time coming, but you got to keep your focus on him. Like I said, we already in trouble time. We got a country that's divided. They got all kind of things going on. Like I said, the people, the people in the church <clears throat> and the people in the body of Christ are going back and forth over all type of things. But like I said, all I see is a bunch of distractions. We got to narrow our focus and put our focus back on the Lord. When I was coming up, and even when I got saved as a teenager, the church was praying, fasting, shutting in. Focus on the Lord. I know our young people I, I grew my I grew my daughters in that too. When it was time to fast, and I'm talking, about I was I was in high school, and sometimes the church would go on a three day fast. I was fasting right there with them, going to classes and doing everything. I had a job, everything else. But see what happened a lot of time in the body of Christ. <clears throat> like I said, we get distracted. Our focus get narrow. Well, for those of y'all that's been along, around long, and some of y'all been around long enough, we got to put our focus back on Jesus. Amen. What doesn't happen now, amen, in the churches, and I'm mighty afraid that it's happening everywhere, and we got to make sure that we don't fall victim to it, is that people focus done got off of Jesus. Amen. They done got, see, they used to hold, they used to sing this song about holding, 
to God's unchanging hand, that you got to build your hopes on things that's eternal. All this stuff that we lusting after, that the Bible tells us to love not the world, neither the things in the world, all these things are going to perish. All these things that are distracting us, all these things that are taking our view, our vision away from God, these things are going to perish. And if you ain't careful, you will perish right along with them. The reason he te keep you to, 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 to tell us to keep our eyes upon him is because he going to stand. He was there in the beginning, he going to be there at the end, and you keep your focus on him, he'll be there too. What done happened in the devil, that's his, he on his job. He done took his, he done, he done caused us to take our focus off of Jesus. Our focus is on something else, or someone else, or some other group of people, or some other thing that you can't put your hopes in. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at the 12th verse. Uh, we'll start at the 10th verse. Amen. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. <clears throat> Verse 12. O our God, will thou, thou judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. This is the children of Israel. They had three different <clears throat> countries that was coming against them. They was outnumbered and they were surrounded. <clears throat> Amen. They didn't know what to do, but they knew to consult the Lord. This is them talking to the Lord, Jehoshaphat. They said, we don't have no might against this company. We don't even know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. See, trouble time is coming. If it hasn't reached you in your life, just hang on and keep praying and prepare for it. But trouble time is coming. And when trouble time comes, you got to have a mind your, your mind already got to be fixed like that, but you got to have a mind to look to Jesus. These people say, we don't have no might. We know we outnumbered. Amen. But we looking under you. Verse 13, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, <coughs> A Levite of the sons of Asaph came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat. In other words, he said, Listen, now I'm fixing to get y'all have made y'all petition unto the Lord. I need y'all to hear what the Lord is saying unto you. <clears throat> Thus said the Lord unto you. Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up from the cliff of Zeal. And ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jerel. In other words, the prophet is telling them, God is going to give you this victory. Amen. The battle is not yours, but it belongs to us. God is such a good God, he won't even let the enemy sneak up on us. He's telling them where they're going to be at. God is going to fight our battle for us, but we got to be looking to him. Some kind of way, as people of God, our vision gets obscured. We get to looking, we get to putting our hopes in something other than the truth and the living God. Amen. God is with us and God is within us, then we can't lose. Only way we lose is we take our eyes off of him. It's some kind of way that devil will fool us sometimes to take our eyes off of him. Sometimes we take our eyes off of him and we put it on a person. We put it on people. The Bible said in the last days many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. We live in a country now where churches and works and people are popping up every single day out of nowhere 
And a lot of them, they got charisma, they got flash, they got a lot of different things people looking for. But when a man of God stand up, the main thing I'm listening for and looking for is two things. Number one, if he come from God, he's going to speak the words of God. Number two, if he come from God, he's going to point the people towards Jesus, not himself. Anytime you see somebody trying to gather and they point people towards them, that's not the attributes of God. Everything, all the prophets, all the apostles, everything was pointing towards Jesus. They were pointing. The prophets were pointing towards the prophecy of the coming of Jesus. The apostles in the New Testament gave the gospel, which was the, the birth, the death, the life, and the resurrection of Jesus. Everything was pointing towards Jesus. If they come from God, they're going to point the people towards Jesus. What's going to happen now, like I said, there's a lot of people out there that's being the sea because they're looking at something else. I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus. See, I could be gone tomorrow, but Jesus is still going to be here. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You're going to see a lot of people, they call them, we call them flash. In the, you see, old people say they come a flash out the pan. They'll be here today and gone tomorrow. Don't get, don't, get, don't get our focus on that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go ye out against them, for the Lord will be with you. See, God always got his people, but, they, but the thing I love about this, they realized they was in a situation and they were looking unto the Lord. They were looking, but we got to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Let's go to the book in the New Testament. Let's look on to go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. In the second verse, everything, everything in the scriptures now, as we look at and then we examine ourselves, is being ready for the coming of the Lord. It's quick, it's, it's, before we get that one, I'm, I'm going to read this one right quickly. Matthew 24, Matthew 24, and then we'll go to Hebrew. Matthew 24. Fifteen, I believe. Matthew twenty four will start at verse eleven. We gotta watch the Bible, the this Bible tell us what's happening and what's happening in real time. You just gotta be searching it, you just gotta be paying attention. But the Bible tells us in real time what's happening. The things that's happening in the world right now, the Bible already foretold them. He said that these things are going to happen. And when you look, they happening and unfolding just like he said it would. The problem is a lot of times, I told you now, 